Hey everybody, and welcome to Contra Hardcore. I feel like Contra is a series that doesn't need any introduction, so let's just dive right in. Alright, we've got four players to choose from right from the start. We've got Ray, Sheena, Fang, and Brownie. And one thing I like about this game over a lot of the earlier Contra games that came before it is that the character selection is here, and it actually matters because each character has a distinct weapon arsenal. My usual favorite is Ray, but I think I am going, well, let's see, Ray. Well, first off, let's try to describe each character a bit for those who don't know. Ray's got a lot of, well, let's, Ray's got a lot of uh, good crap, crowd control. He doesn't have very strong weapons. Out of all the characters, he definitely has the weakest damage output, but he has both a spread shot, which people who know Contra understand how useful that can be, and he also has homing missiles. But only one of his weapons really has good damage output, because those two weapons aren't very strong. Sheena is kind of like a variant of Rey, she has she has both spread and homing combined into one weapon, which is obviously effective. And she has two, but she has and she has a couple weapons that have higher damage output. The problem is if she loses her one uh, crowd control weapon, that's it. She doesn't have any other efficient crowd control. Whereas Ray, if you lose the homing or spread, you can fall back on the other. Losing weapons occurring uh, like in other Contra games when you lose a life. Fang. Fang is definitely the worst when it comes to crowd control, but his weapons deal a lot of damage. He has a lot of really powerful weapons, but they're not very efficient at rapid fire for dealing with large groups of enemies. And uh, some of them can't even be aimed up or down. They can only be fired in a straight shot. But they hit really hard compared to other weapons. And a drawback of his though that kind of bugs me is he does have the largest hit box of any character, which can be useful because it also means his bullets go higher. So he can shoot over obstacles more efficiently than other characters. But it also means higher hanging bullets can hit him. And then you've got Brownie, who's very small, very uh, easy, very hard to hit. But he has kind of the same uh, trade-off as Fang in that he can't shoot over things. Like in the first stage in particular, there are some barrels that all the characters can shoot over except Brownie. Brownie's bullets will just hit the barrels and that's it. He also has a weaker jump than the other characters, but he can double jump and uh, hover in midair for more aerial control. And as for his weapons, they're a little more technical than the other characters. He has a lot of power with some of his weapons and he has some, he has kind of a mix of crowd control and power, but his crowd control weapons are really awkward to use. He's just an unusual character. I think I'm actually going to choose him just to kind of show what I mean about how his weapons work. Because they are a bit more unique. Like the other characters have standard weapons like homing missiles, spread, she has laser, she can shoot grenades. He has a flamethrower and a charge shot. All three of them has very standard shoot 'em up weapons. Then you have Brownie, who can shoot things like boomerang bullets and a uh, yo-yo. Which isn't standard shoot 'em up affair, so I think I'm gonna choose him. My usual choice is Ray, but I'm gonna go with Brownie just to demonstrate what I mean by how he works. Our security system has been breached by an unknown hacker. 
an unmanned robot is running rampant throughout the city. I want you to proceed to the area ASAP and restore order. So, I looked up the story of this game uh, online before starting, and there wasn't really a whole lot to go into. Basically, you're just a special, uh, special forces unit called Hardcore, and you're just going in here to deal with these this hacker situation. Some hackers, I guess, just start causing chaos in the. That was terrible. Start causing some chaos in the city. And it's your job to handle it. See, here's one of Brownie's weapons I was talking about. His uh, upgraded machine gun. If you turn, it does sort of a wave thing, which can be useful. I'm off to a horrible start, but... This is not a game I'm used to playing while talking. Anyway, but like if you turn like this... You just automatically start shooting in that direction. And with every other character, their upgraded machine gun functions like that. But Brownies, as you saw, goes into in an arc. So if you want to instantly start shooting in another direction, you have to release the fire button, then turn. If you hold it, it just kind of goes all over the place, which can be useful. It gives him a wider number of... Uh, it allows him to shoot in more than just the standard eight directions if you need to hit something at a very particular angle. Also, if you notice on the top of the screen, it just says shot one underneath my lives. If I hold the shoot button and press the weapon switch button, I can switch to shot two. And what that does is it allows you to aim without moving. Which has its obvious advantages. Typically, I feel you want to be on shot one so you can keep progressing through the stage without ever letting go of the fire button. Unless you're using Fang. But, obviously, sometimes shot two is necessary to, you know, hit things without running into them. Got a couple more weapons here. Let's show these off real quick. This is an unusual one. It... Fire, these are the boomerangs I was talking about. He fires bullets that fire a short distance and then come back. And if you jump around, you can keep them on screen. And then he has this weapon. Once those wear off. Okay, this is the yo-yo. I And this does a lot of damage. And the orb at the end of it, if there's any enemies on the screen, it will home in on them. But it doesn't stick to them like homing rockets. Because it has sort of its own momentum going, which you can sort of control by moving around. The blue string on it will also uh, deal damage, but not as much as the very end. And this is just a screen clearing bomb. That's the same with every character. Also, if you press down and jump, you can sl slide, which gives you invulnerability. And we're at the first boss. That's not the unmanned robot. Somebody is inside that thing. That was a terrible brownie voice. His boss isn't too tough. He's got a duck under his bullets. Stay out of the way. Just keep shooting him. Once he jumps to the center, he's about to phase shift. Nope. Oh. I'm used to having stronger weapon. There we go. I'm used to having stronger weapons for this because I usually don't die during this stage. See, look at that. That will kind of track him. But it's not the best tracking. But that just does so much damage if it's stuck to the enemy. Yeah. What or who are you? <laughs> you can call me Dead Eye Joe. If you want to know more than that, then come and get me. The research center is under attack by an unknown group. Please come and help. Damn, what should we do? Here's another thing I like about this game is it has branching paths and this will determine which stage we go to. Considering how horribly I'm doing, I'm going to chase after Dead-Eye Joe because ever since I was a kid playing this game, I always felt like this was the easier of the two stages. So that should hopefully compens help compensate for how badly I've been doing. We've got these guys coming from the background. This isn't too tough though. Just gotta hang back, jump if needed, and just let my yo-yo uh, take him out.
Get up here. Take out that building. So long as evil exists in this world, the wrath of justice shall strike it down. This guy comes in with a bomb. And I've got a mini boss. This spider with a Gatling gun. Yeah, the yo-yo's homing isn't as reliable as the homing spread or the homing missiles with Sheena and Ray. But if I had been using one of them instead, that boss battle would have taken two or three times as long because of the damage output. Those aren't anything. Oh, I got my machine gun back. I'm going to use this. Here's another little mini boss, but this guy's not too tough. Done already. Now we got the main boss. We've got Dead Eye Joe and a giant robot with spike ball hands. Slide. Now he's gonna jump at us. Just gotta be ready to dodge. I always thought that was a cool effect. Oh, and full disclaimer, I meant to say this earlier in the video, but I do not plan on beating this game. Not only am I already doing horribly, but I've never beaten it before. So do not ex so unless I just happen to get really lucky, do not expect a full playthrough here. I have no idea how long this episode's been going. I'm just gonna. You can't get away now. Give yourself up. <laughs> you fool! I'm nothing more than a decoy. By this time, my friends have arrived at the research center and have gotten their hands on the alien cell. Alien cell. Now begins the true horror. <laughs> oh god, I got the hiccups right as I was doing that laugh. Oh! Oh man, Dead Eye Joe's last remark before he blows himself up was just him hiccuping through a menacing cough. Oh, what a pathetic way to go. Anyway, Dead Eye Joe was just a distraction. The enemy got hold of the alien cell, which. I believe has to do with Contra 3, but I've never really played much of Contra 3, so I can't be sure. I did, while looking at the plot, I did read online that, it, well, I'll get into that after this. Three days later, we've identified the hacker who breached our security. His name is Neumann Cascade. He's the best hacker on the net. He used the panic caused by the robot as a diversion so he could steal the mother alien cell from the research center. It's very likely there is an organization working behind him. His hideout is under a garbage dump. Don't screw this one up. Ah, uh, now I don't even remember what I was saying. Oops. I wanted to switch to this. I so you gotta let go of the fire button to... Uh, what was I talking about? Ah, uh, I got so distracted by reading all that text, I forgot what I was saying. Oh well. Let's just invade this garbage dump. With all these robots jumping around everywhere. Here we have a destroyed gun with a turret on it. Just gonna hang low. Let my yo-yo do all the work. The interesting thing about Brownie, though, is... Oh, that... I don't know why I did that. Just poor judgment. Anyway, I was gonna say... Uh, I never really used Brownie much growing up. He was probably my least used character. Not because I thought he was bad. 
but because everybody else I knew used him. Here's a timer shot two is useful. So everybody else used him. My brother and all my friends would, I recall, would always want to use brown here. I mean, I didn't mind too much because I preferred Ray anyway. Ray was always my preferred character, but I, but even when I wanted to switch it up, I didn't have much opportunity to really use Brownie. Because everybody else would want to use him. They like they wanted the double jump and they wanted the yo-yo. We're infiltrating Neumann's base under a trash dump. Seems like an unusual place for a headquarters, but if he built all this stuff, he probably uh, likes how th this place is just filled with supplies. Now I've got a door here, or as I learned from a friend by complete accident, we can climb up this wall and find the battle arena. And I've, I actually have a little bit of a story about that, because, well, hey you! Want to make some money in the battle arena? Give it a try. Well, good luck. So I actually found this when I was playing with a friend. Because... Oh yeah, and here's this guy that's a bit of a... Fun little... Castlevania Easter egg. Oops. So, I actually discovered this place because I was playing with a friend. And he just decided to start climbing the wall. I was sitting there shooting the door to access the next area. And he just decided to climb the wall. Just that complete random. This was like climbing the wall just to pass the time while I was shooting the door. And then... Uh, we just ended up in this place. And we're like, what is this? And that's one life lost. But yeah, I just want I wanted to show off this little thing. Um You know, let's try Fang. It's still early. Alright, just I forgot it dumps me right here. I don't want Fang then. Because that just means I'm a bigger hitbox without any of the bonuses of stronger weapons. Da -da 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 -da. Because I'm pretty sure all their standard machine guns are the same. I don't think that has any power differences between the characters. I actually don't really remember this guy very well. Or how to fight him. That's working. Alright. I think I see what I gotta do. Fortunately, that doesn't knock me down, so I just gotta keep shooting him now. Alright, round three. It's weird. Ow. I can do this. I will not end an episode until I do. And for those of you who haven't seen it, you'll see why. Alright, let's just... Let's go with Ray. Bit of a smaller target, and we'll get the job done. First guy down. That's one creepy thing. What? Okay. In a good spot. Take a little bit longer, but at least I'm safe. What? Or not. I mistook a missile exploding for the turret exploding. I need to take this thing out. There. That was actually the right explosion. Okay. Of course, you gotta move me over there.
Got it. Curses! The interdimensional portal is still open! Ah! Ah, freaking out monkeys! Ah! What happened? There's a dinosaur! Ouch! Looks like... It looks like somehow we've been gone back in time, or... Ah, blah, blah, blah. And several years passed before... And we become the king of the monkeys! And for some reason, uh, Sheena's monkey partner is a lady. That makes it even weirder than uh, the other... Well, I don't know. What's weirder? The monkey lady falling for the female woman? Or the monkey lady falling for the robot? Because on one hand, Brownie is male, I guess. But on the other hand, he's a robot. Anyway, I just wanted to show off that ending. I know I said I wasn't going to beat the game, but I really don't feel this ending counts because you have to go through two easy stages. Well, three technically. And then fight a boss that's really not that difficult. Although, if this performance is anything to go by, then I'm not going to get very far in a real run. But that's what we're going to be doing next time. I'm going to get us back up to uh, the third stage boss. And then we're going to continue on from there and pr c proceed with the uh, standard game. I am going to take the same branching path from the first stage, Chasing Deadeye Joe. Because that decision does affect some things later on in regards to how certain levels play out or what stages you have access to. That being said, we'll see you next mission.